Brandon. Hi, Brandon. What brings you in today? Hey, Dr. Mo. Haven't been feeling the best. Really? What happened? So the other day, I was doing this TikTok trend. I was doing the Renegade, and I heard two snaps. And really? Yeah, and they were in my chest area. And so I'm coming in here uh, at your pristine physical therapy clinic, mm -hmm. Mike Andrew Nelson, to hopefully she is the get best. some therapy. We may need to amputate both your arms, so let me see. Stand up for me, let me see. Yeah, so... Give me a little bit of specifics of where it hurts. Okay, so the pain is like right here yep. on my chest. This is where it hurts the most, but then there's a little like lingering sort of pain right here. I'm okay. not really sure. I need to take a little bit of a What's closer look, so if you just put this arm down real quick. Okay. All right, so right here we have the pectoralis major, which is the most superficial muscle on the chest. On the, right, on the left side here, we have the pectoralis minor, which is deep to that pectoralis major. So what I'm gonna recommend is that we do a series of workouts so that you're not a skinny little boy, all right? Let's go. Thank you, Kenzo. Anyway. All right, so um, per Dr. Mo's advice, I need to work on the pecs a little more. So for the sake of our test, being identification only, who cares about the O, I's, or A's? Right now, I'm gonna show you guys um, how to hit the pectoralis major, which is the biggest and beautiful most beautiful muscle in the human body. So let's get home. Pump right now. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. All right, that went pretty well. So now let's go get the pectoralis minor. All right guys, so the next muscle that Dr. Mo told me to work out was the pectoralis minor. Pectoralis minor is um, deep to the pectoralis major. And so, let's do it. What is love? Excuse me, can you give me a minute so I can finalize my papers? Okay. Come in. Hey, doctor. Uh, how's your day? I'm doing good, Mo. How are you? I could be better. Professor Nelson's giving me a really bad exam. I was on American Idol with Dua Lipa, and I pulled my, my upper back doing some dances and stuff. I don't know, I couldn't keep up with her. If you could just take a look, it's my upper back and my neck. It's just, it's just really okay. bothering me. If you can help me out. Okay. So, well, can you can you point to the areas where the pain is localized? Yeah, it's just, dude, it's just in my upper neck and just okay. my back. So, just here, what you're saying. Okay. As we can see here, this is the trapezius. The trapezius is the most superficial back muscle starting from the nuchal line right here at the neck and ending at the lower lumbar region. And as we look, Muhammad said he had a little bit of pain from American Idol. Um, this is the sternocleidomastoid. The sternocleidomastoid is the largest um, neck muscle that allows for head rotation. So um, you can apply next year for American Idol, but this year is not your year. So uh, I'll see you. Oh wait, Muhammad, come here, let me say something. Yeah. So, pertaining to your American Idol career, I'm yeah. sure you still want to partake in that eventually, of right? Do a leap at anything. Okay, so what I'm going to do for you, I'm going to send you to physical therapy and have you do a specific set of workouts to get you onto American Idol one day and get you that golden buzzer. All right? Thank you so much, sir. Thank okay. you very much. Okay. Yes! Two. So, Dr. Brandon recommended that I work out some traps to get my traps to be as big as his. The traps are the most superficial muscle on the upper back and cover the shoulders and neck. So, let's get into it. Yeah. See, so the amazing Dr. Brandon told me that I should work out my sternocleidomastoid for a very dumb reason. The sternocleidomastoid is the largest muscle in the neck and it's responsible for turning the head and extending the neck. So how do I work this out, might you ask? Got a little workout right here. Stupidest thing I've ever done in my life. Gonna hold for two seconds. One, two, down. Can I go 
go down. One, two, down. And then one more time. <laughs> That's how you get swole. All right, guys, it's Arab Nerd here, back with another anatomy YouTube video. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about the anterior and posterior pituitary. So it might be deceiving because these are two very easy um, glands to spot once you first learn it, but there are some things that you need to know that can make it confusing when identifying for the sake of this exam. So as, I, as we can see here, this is a picture of the whole brain. And um, this is the front of the brain, and this is the back of the brain, and this is denoted by this being the cerebellum, and then this just being the frontal lobe. And so the anterior and posterior pituitary are um, more on the front side. I know it's kind of like a layman's terms, but that's the best way I could say it. So um, this is the front side of the brain, anterior and posterior pituitary are right here. And so as we learned in physiology, anterior is in front, posterior is in back. So this is the anterior pituitary, and this is the posterior, as we can see here. And then right above it, is the hypothalamus which i'll mention a little bit more later just to tie everything in so if we come over here this is a zoomed in picture of the anterior and posterior pituitary so i'm going to label it again this is the anterior and this is the posterior pituitary and then this is the pituitary stalk which connects um both the pituitary glands and then right above it is the hypothalamus and now this is important for identification because on the exam they might ask um is the uh, anterior and posterior pituitary or pituitary gland inferior or um superior to the hypothalamus and as you can see here the hypothalamus is superior to the um, pituitary so the pituitary would be inferior since it's below it so this is just a frame of reference to know where we're at and where everything is. So now just some facts to know. I know it's identification, but things could be asked in a lot of different ways. The posterior pituitary is also um, a mass of nervous tissue. Um, it's not a true gland due, it, due to it being a mass of nervous tissue. And it is also called hypothalamic hypophysial tract. So if there's an identification question that asks, um, which of the pituitary and pictured above is in which tract, for example, it's the hypothalamic hypophysial tract. Now, if we come over here, just two small things. The anterior pituitary is called the hypophysial portal system as opposed to the hypothalamic hypophysial tract. That is a mouthful. So this is just called the hypophysial portal system. And um, it is not technically a part of the brain since it releases its own hormones and posterior gets it from the hypothalamus. So now, give me one moment. I'm gonna show you guys a animated uh, picture. So as we can see here, um, this is very important to denote because as I mentioned, um, this is the frontal lobe of the brain and this is the back of the brain as seen here with the cerebellum. And uh, as we can see towards the front of the brain, this is the, where the pituitary gland is. And if we zoom in here, it'll be divided accordingly, but this is the anterior and this is the posterior. And so, um, as I mentioned also before, right above the pituitary is the hypothalamus, okay? And if we go above, this is a um, actual human brain, just for reference so everyone can see. Pituitary gland is right here, right next to the frontal lobe, not the cerebellum. One last thing, this is where I got confused too, which is really important to know with identification. If we look here, this is not the pituitary gland. This is the pineal gland. And the reason why you, this should be ringing bells in your head is because this is right next to the cerebrum. And I almost got this confused. I spelt it wrong, but I thought this was the pituitary at first because it looks like it because something dangling off, but it's not because this is at the back of, of the brain, as we could see right next to the cerebrum. So this is the pineal gland. The um, pituitary gland, it's right here. Because as I mentioned, it's towards the front of the brain. So. That's it by Arab Nerd. Thank you. So I'm gonna go over the internal skull features and hopefully make it a little bit more transparent for the upcoming exam. So in the most simplistic way that I can explain this, internal skull features are divided into three major areas. We have the anterior aspect, 
We have the anterior aspect, we have the middle, and we have the posterior aspect of the internal skull. So I'm gonna start with the anterior aspect and work my way down to the posterior. So at the top right here, we have the crista galli, which is this thickish bone right here. And then next to it, we have the cribriform plate, which is this area over here. And the cribriform plate is part of the ethmoid bone, okay? And now moving on from those two areas, we, we go into this area where we see kind of two little hooks or wings. And what this is called are the lesser wings of the sphenoid bone. And at the tip of each of these wings, we have the anterior clinoid process. So we have the lesser wings of the sphenoid and at the tip is the anterior clinoid process. And in between, and there's a little gap, and then we have this bone over here, which is kind of like a thick bone again, and that is known as the posterior clinoid process. And in between the anterior and posterior clinoid process, we have this little space right here, this little gap, and that is known as the cella tersica, okay? So we have the lesser wings of the sphenoid, the anterior clinoid process on the tips of those, we have a little gap, which is the cella tersica, and then the posterior clinoid process. So now that we're done with those, let's go into the foramens because there's a decent amount of them we want to make sure we understand. So starting off right here, we have the foramen rotundum which is on, I'm highlighting right there on both sides. And then moving down, we have the foramen ovale, which is right here, coloring it in again. And then moving down, we have the foramen spinosum, which is the last one right there. So it goes foramen rotundum, ovale, spinosum. Those three are the main ones to remember. And now moving on from there, more towards the middle and posterior aspect of the internal skull, we have the acoustic meatus, which again, Gonna highlight in right there. And continuing to move further down, we have the jugular foramen right there. And then we have the big circle right here, which is the foramen magnum. And this little, these two little dots in between right next to the foramen uh, magnum, this is the hypoglossal nerve. And if you wanna kill two birds with one stone, the hypoglossal, uh, sorry, the hypoglossal canal, my mistakes, the hypoglossal nerve is what goes through the hypoglossal canal, and that's the 12th cranial nerve, just to give a little bit of reference. And now moving on to the posterior aspect of the brain, or the skull, we have the internal occipital crest, which is right here. So yeah, that's those are the internal skull features that we need to know, and hopefully it made a bit more sense. Okay, so now that we spoke about the internal skull features, let's get into the cranial nerves, specifically cranial nerve number six. And in terms of reference point, we have cranial nerve number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and then number six, which is what we're focusing on, which is right in this area, just to make sure it is understood. So Cranial nerve number six is called the abducens nerve, and its function is lateral eye movement, and its cranial passage is the superior orbital fissure. So in terms of, for the exam, abducens, just think lateral eye movement and superior orbital fissure. So hopefully that's easy enough to remember. And in terms of the other nerves, if you want to remember other nerves for the exam as well that are involved in eye movement. We have the oculomotor, which is cranial nerve number three, trochlear, which is cranial nerve number four, and abducens, which I just mentioned, is cranial nerve number six. So O, T, and A. A good acronym for that is Occupational Therapy Assistant. Hopefully that makes sense.